Hello, my name is Lucas and welcome back to yet another video on my channel. Today we're going to be doing something quite different uh, to the past couple videos that I put out over the past couple weeks. And that is, I'm going to be giving a tour of my own personal survival world. You see, this is my personal survival, single player survival world that I've been uh, playing on for I think the past like two years. I created this world uh, September 10th, 2019. And uh, yeah, I think this um, this video will definitely be there to touch up on, you know, what I've been doing the past two years in this survival world, and especially what I'm planning to do with it in the future. Anyways, aside from that, let's get into the video. Okay, so I feel that the, the most appropriate place to start off at is the spawn area. So this is the spawn area of my world. Um, over here, I've kind of turned the spawn chunks into this big old industrial district just because uh, if you don't know, spawn chunks, they remain loaded in even if you're in other parts of the world, which makes it very useful for auto farms so that your auto farms will always run automatically even while you are not there. So over here, um, I have several farms as you can see. I have a small little sugarcane farm. This is the very first sugarcane farm that I started in this world. Uh, it's pretty It's pretty basic, it's pretty manual. And uh, up here we have this gigantic sugarcane farm. Uh, this is in, this entire build is, is inspired by IBX Toy Cat. Uh, he has a very, very similar design of the sugarcane farm in his own survival let's play world. So yeah, that's that's where I got the inspiration of this from. Um, it produces a heck ton of sugarcane. I will I will say, and um, but it is manual, which is fine to be honest, because it, it looks pretty it looks pretty insane. Um, over here we have an automatic bone mill farm. So what I do is once I harvest this these wheat fields over here, is I take the seeds after I'm done replanting them. And then I put it inside these little chests right here, which uh, the line of hoppers, they bring down and then they compost into these composters. And then I get bone meal. Uh, over here, this was a villager breeder, but it, um, it's an impulse SV design, but it keeps on breaking all the time. So I kind of just uh, remove the breeding section over here. This is why there's this little trap door opening right here. Uh, I removed that part um, a couple months ago just because it wasn't really working anymore. I think something broke with the 1.16 update. So yeah, that doesn't work anymore. And uh, over here, this is a much larger wheat field. Uh, this is my most recent addition to this to this industrial district area. Uh, I sort of have this um, like, uh, more like haphazardly place uh, fence line going through here. Uh, just to, just to separate it off from the rest of the industrial district. And I'm hoping that I can um, try and expand this all the way so it covers all of these hills and stuff. So I can I can make it look like a very uh, pi picturesque um, wheat field all around the surroundings and thinking up into that mountain into the distance. And uh, right behind me I have this um, fairly small size um, pumpkin and melon patch. Uh, this is also an early game thing that I had going um, I think a year ago, a year and a half at this point. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty broken and stuff. I need to replace some of the seeds and uh, yeah definitely. And uh, I probably need to harvest this too soon because you know it, everything always grows very fast here because it's in the spawn chunks. So yeah um, that's that. I, kind of stopped using that because over here we have a much much larger uh, pumpkin and melon field so uh, it's kind of mixed in it's mainly pumpkins just because I have more of a use for them uh, because uh, I trade them with that guy and uh, yeah it's a pretty pretty large patch what basically what I do is I run along here and uh, I go back and forth harvesting them oops <laughs> see yeah, uh, this this design probably has some flaws. It probably shouldn't have placed it on there. And um, over here, though, this is the entrance to my uh, original mines. You see, I had this um, up on the surface where you saw those, where you saw the wheat field, the smaller wheat field uh, right here. I had this. Uh, this that was my starter house at the spawn point. 
and uh, this was the original mine that went all the way down to uh, Y11. And yeah, I used this a ton in the early game, um, late 2019. I don't use it anymore just because, you know, I have, I have all the gear I need. I don't need any more diamonds or really redstone and stuff. So um, heading back up this way, let's go ahead and walk over here. And this is my uh, pretty large uh, carrot farm. Ignore that. Um, so basically this is where I, obviously I go to harvest all my carrots. Uh, I take all these and I harvest it. And I mean, I trade it with that guy over there in the village of Raider. I sort of use him as um, trading and stuff. And uh, yeah, that's, that's how that pretty much works. And of course I have other villagers at my uh, larger base that you will see very soon and uh yeah that's pretty much it for this area oh i forgot um so i this is this is sort of my cactus planting area what i do is i go over here and i harvest the cactuses uh just so i can get you know green dye and stuff like that uh, this also was my former resource desert, but I kind of stopped using it just because, it, I mean, it makes it look ugly. And this is my, you know, sort of like spawn point and I wanted to make it look good. But over here, this is my very first trading hall setup. So what I have over here is I have four villagers. Uh, they each have mending, power five, feather falling, efficiency five, fire ice two, and unbreaking three. So this is sort of like, you know, the more important treasure chant, treasure enchantment villagers that I have in this area, this part of the world. Over here, I just have some basic supplies like a stone cutter, a crafting table, bed, um, chests if I do need that. And of course, ender chests and smithing table. And over here, this is a uh, very special cleric actually. You see just outside of here, uh, there is a um, pretty large village that spawned over here. Uh, I think you can see a couple of the original planters if I go over here. Yep, right here. Um, it was a pretty large village, but uh, you see, because I decided to put my uh, starter house right next to it, that means whenever you forget to go to sleep, that means uh, zombies spawn in the area and then they go over and attack the village, which wasn't good. So uh, this... this um, villager actually generated with the world in September 2019, so it's a, it's a, it's a pretty historic uh, villager, I think, pretty important to the world. And over here, this is my pretty large uh, emerald beacon. Uh, this is what I got from trading uh, tons and tons of paper from that super large sugar sugarcane farm. Uh, I traded all the paper, and then um, I traded it with them, and I got. Uh, I think two stacks and 36 emeralds, emerald blocks, and yeah, I turned it into a beacon. And this is sort of um, my main beacon of this area. Uh, it gives me speed to effect, because you know, why not? Who doesn't like running fast? And um, I think the very next thing over here is this is sort of the area where I go to farm, you know, oak trees and stuff, because you know, I use oak wood a lot in my builds. And um, over here, uh, this is my iron farm. Uh, you see, it was kind of broken. So I built this last year. I think I built this maybe like July, August, 2020. Uh, and it, it worked. It didn't exactly work for like the first four months and stuff. Because you see, I built it way too close to the villager breeder over there. And so the villagers were interfering with the rates of this farm. But now that I have less villagers over there because I kind of shut off the villager breeding section, um, I have a very diff I have a different uh, villager breeder in a different part of the base. It's at my larger base. I'll show that off later. But yeah, this is sort of my main iron farm now. It has incredible rates, as you just saw. It um, it's very it's very good, and it gets me a ton of iron, as you can see here. And in fact, this chest is already overflowed. So I, I may need to go back and expand some storage uh, because it's it's just that it's just that good. Yeah, I think I think that's it for this area. So let's go in and let's let's go into the Nether portal and let's go visit the other areas of my world. So immediately coming into the Nether, we can see that I have this uh, very 
I have this sort of network of um, uh, packed ice pathways and stuff. Uh, this this is sort of my main transportation highway, of course, because as you as you likely know, if you travel in the Nether, it's eight times faster and you cover eight times more distance in the Nether than in the Overworld. So I have this gigantic system of packed ice pathways that I use to get around my world. Um, so over here, I have this very very long uh, ice pathway that goes over to the to the um, mesa biome in my world. Um, the, it is the nearest mesa biome in my world. Yes, it's that far away. It's I think it's almost 20,000 blocks away in the overworld. Uh, so yeah, it's very, very long um, pathway. I won't be going over there um, anytime soon just because I don't have any time to. The journey itself is long enough. And over here, we have sort of my um, former industrial district like I was um, you know I should probably go ahead and take the boat over there and just show it off because you know why not so going down this pathway we come to the nether portal which is my sort of former industrial district um, you see I was planning to have my industrial district based here okay so over here you can see this is my main um, former industrial district slash iceberg biome um, this is where I go to collect all my uh, packed ice and blue ice for all those different pathways and farms that you will see and have seen in this video. And um, over here, this is this is uh, sort of sort of one of my hostile mob farms. I have another hostile mob farm inside um, inside of my larger base that you, of course, like again, uh, see in the future in this video. Um, and yeah, uh, it's fairly productive, but it's probably not not productive enough. I would definitely prefer to have a lot more. Uh, it's definitely lacking on gunpowder, uh, which is why I created that second um, creeper mob farm over by my larger base uh, earlier. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this area. I wanted it to have it. I wanted to have it as my main industrial district. But I just decided to have my industrial district in the spawn chunk just because I wanted to have the industrial district sort of in the main space of the world. So yeah, uh, that's that's why I moved it and that's why there's nothing there. Um, over here we come to yet another crossroads. Down, down that hallway and over to the left, uh, that is my main mushroom island. Uh, nothing, nothing's really going on over there so I won't check that out. But uh, over here, this is my main um, flower forest, and it also has a village spawning in that flower forest. Um, it's a plain village. Uh, it's sort of where I uh, used to go in order to transport villagers over to my newer villager breeder. Um, I haven't used that in a while just because I have enough villagers. Um, I have a ton over at that newer base. And uh, it also comes out into the coral reef. That is where I go to get my coral uh, and um, different types of fish because I, I made a pretty large aquarium at my newer base. You will see that, I promise. And um, yeah, that's also where I go to get the sea pickles. So uh, going down this, uh, we have this sort of nice um, nice pathway that goes over the, um, the ocean, the lava lakes, uh, you see. When I was originally um, building this in the, I think the 1.14 update was when I did this. Uh, you see, I built this uh, too, too low down. I should have built it up, up towards the bedrock ceiling of the nether, but I ended up building it too low. But I really do think that this uh, area looks pretty dang cool. Um, and yeah, it gives you, oh no. It gives you a pretty, it gives you a pretty nice view of the surrounding nether. And uh, apparently I am stuck. Moving down this pathway and if we go up to this ladder and if we avoid cast, um, you will come across my biggest farm that I've actually built in this entire world. And you may have already guessed it, it is a gold farm. So. Uh, at the moment, this is my this is the only thing that is up at the nether roof. Um, just because I, I do quite like the rates of this, it is very productive, very productive. 
as you can see by all those uh, zombified piglins um, dropping down into the killing chamber. And I, I will probably also turn down my volume quite a bit. And what I do is I go over here and I base. I used to use this as an XP farm. Uh, I don't really use this a lot anymore because I have an Enderman farm in my uh, end. So it, I haven't used this in a while, but I have set this. So this was a thing that I have set up um, back in um, August 2020 when I was playing this word a lot. And there is, this is actually a very special sword. This is the very, this originally was the very first diamond sword of this world. Um, I named it Istab back then. And uh, this is what I used to farm XP because it's a sweeping edge sword and it works better for killing the zombified pigments. And um, over here you can see I have an anvil and a grindstone. So if I get any enchanted golden swords, I go over here uh, and I can use the grindstone to regain some of the XP. And if I'm um, if I'm mending some tools or I'm applying some tools after I get enough XP, I just use the anvil and uh, do it that way. Over here, this is my main sort of like collection area. Uh, you see, I have a bunch of hopper minecarts positioned above uh, hoppers, and that sort of brings it down into this uh, small little storage. Thing. I haven't I wanted to expand this I wanted to have like you know item sorters going both directions just so I can uh, just for ease of access but I never ended up getting around to that so at this point it's just a matter of cleaning out all those rotten flesh and uh, golden sword so I can get the actual gold okay so heading back in this direction um, this is my this is the biggest project I have ever taken I have ever done in this entire world and that is my omega base so stepping through this portal we are met with a with the storage system of this very large mega base um if you have been following me on reddit i have posted this build a couple times but this is this is uh, the largest project of my world and that is my mega base so um this this uh design for this mega base was directly inspired from the imp from Impulse SV's mega base in uh, season six of Hermitcraft. Uh, that's where the design come came from. The project started uh, March 2020, and I finished this in uh, March 2021. So it it definitely took a very long time to complete. Um, and I still have uh, parts to do. Like I I want to finish uh, terraforming around this area since I did the terraforming around that area. Kind of want to bring this um this sort of like cliff side back but i do have a rather decorative uh piece and stuff that i really like that i did is i have these sort of um walls that go around the entire perimeter of the thing and i think i think that they look uh very nice so i really do like how that turned out flying back inside um we had this sort of sort of um backdrop these, I don't, I'm not sure what to call those, but um, I sort of added these for uh, decorative pieces. This took a ton, a ton of wood. Um, I was farming wood out in a different taiga for days on end. Uh, I would not want to do that again. So, and over here, this is my super smelter. So how this works is uh, there's this little like secret um, access to go into here. What I do is I load the material I want to smelt up in this minecart, and then I load the fuel into this minecart. And then how this works is that I go over here, I flip this leather, uh, it goes back and forth on tracks. Uh, the materials, they go into the hoppers, which then go into the furnaces. Um, I use uh, blaze rods for fuel, of course, because I have a blaze, ro blaze rod farm. I have a line of hoppers that move down into the uh, chest over at the very end. Um, I'll just show it again because, you know, why not? Um, yeah, so this is where the smelted items, they come into that chest. And uh, moving back over here, we have, uh, we have two ma large map walls, one over there and one right here. This is a map of my um, sort of like spawn area and stuff. You can see that that's, um, you know, my industrial district and stuff with that huge sugarcane tower, the 
uh, Melanie Pumpkin Patch, villager, former villager breeder, and yeah, uh, I I do I do really like maps in this world, so that's that's why I added this. And over here, this is a map wall of my mega base. Uh, you can see I um, decided to build it in a gigantic mega taiga because you know this is my favorite biome, and I do really like how this entire like island peninsula is shaped with with the sort of like barrier islands on the outside. And uh, yeah, I really do love this uh, small location and I especially love the seed. I will put the seed in the description of this video. Um, probably not a world download uh, for a couple more months just because I wanna keep this world in 1.17 and I wanna keep it until 1.18 comes out in the future. Uh, then once 1.18 1, 1 comes out, I will be creating a new single player survival world. Um, but moving over here, over here we have this um, villager trading hall. I forgot who designed this. I think I think I used Mumbo Jumbo's design from the Hermitcraft server for this, but I'm not too I'm not too sure who perfected this. I don't know. Sorry if I haven't given any proper credit. But um, uh, this is my main trading setup for this world. So I have a bunch of librarian villagers. One unfortunately died the other week, but I have a bunch of librarian villagers. And what I go and do is I bring some emeralds. Uh, I usually bring the sugar cane that I farm from that um, industrial district. I bring it over here, turn it into paper, and then trade it with these guys in order to level them up because uh, it gives a ton of emeralds and experience, which is why I have 42 levels right now. Over here, this is uh, my um, toolsmith guys. Uh, I originally wanted to have it so they would uh, trade um, diamond diamond tools, you know, diamond uh, pickaxes and axes and you know stuff like that. But I never actually ended up uh, leveling these these guys up. I just I kind of forgot that I had, that I needed to do that. Over here, this these are my farmers. What I do is I go and trade um, the wheat and uh, carrots. I farm from the industrial district I bring it over here usually packed in shulker boxes and then I trade it with these guys and yeah that's also how I farm emeralds and of course uh, the you can't forget the Fletchers um, I use I or wanted to use them uh, because I have I used to have a ton of wood that I could just break down into sticks and get you know easy emeralds for that 